Hello viewer, I'm Sajjan Ras Prokhrel and welcome to my channel Third Eye Discussion. Today I will be expounding another relation from Flax Golden Tell, a syllabus of BA First Year Compulsory English. So we have an essay, Scientific Inquiry, Invention and Test. This is a scientific essay. The process of scientific discovery often involves formulating hypothesis, testing prediction and an interdisciplinary search in the real world. A scientific inquiry carries a several assumptions and testings to get the invention of scientific discoveries. Thus, the writer tries to say that one should formulate a good hypothesis, test the possible condition and reach the conclusion through a rigorous scientific inquiry. So, viewer, let's begin the today's discussion with the author's introduction. About author, Carl Gustav Hempel was German writer and philosopher born in January 8, 1905. He was a major figure of logical empiricism, 20th century movement in the philosophy of science. Hempel studied mathematics, physics and philosophy at the University of Göttingen and subsequently at the University of Berlin and the Heidelberg University. In 1934, he received his doctoral degree from the University of Berlin with dissertation on probability theory. Within a year of completing his doctorate, the increasingly repressive and anti-Semitic Nazis resigned in German had promoted Hampel to immigrate to Belgium as his wife was Jewish ancestors. Later in 1937, Hampel immigrated to the United States where he accepted a position as Rudolf Carnap's assistant at the University of Chicago. He also taught in the high-level institutions like University of LA, University of Princeton, University of Hebrew, University of Pittsburgh. Hampel left the world on November 9, 1997. Okay, dear viewers, let's start the essay from the Golden Flax tale. Hampel tells about the research of Ignaz Samuel Weiss, who discovered the main cause of death of a large number of women in the First Maternity Ward. Samuel Weiss, a physician of Hungarian birth, did this work during the year of 1844 to 1848 at Vienna General Hospital as a member of medical staff of First Maternity Ward in the hospital. He was distressed to find that a large proportion of women were delivered of their babies in that division contracted the serious and often fatal illness known as perpetual fever or childhood fever. They died from it while they delivered their babies. Samuel Lewis began by considering various explanations that were current at the time. He chose some of the experiments. One of the views assumed that the cause of epidemic. However, he argued that such influences could not affect the first division only. In both the first and second division, women delivered babies suffered from the childbed fever and died it off. But the surprising thing was that the number of women died of such flatal illness was greater in the first division. But the crowd was more in second division because the patient wanted to avoid the notorious first division. So Samuel Lewis made three hypotheses that will make him easy to find out why the death rate of women in a first division is more. Number one, first hypothesis was about epidemic influences. Second hypothesis was about overcrowding. And third hypothesis was for the commission held for the investigation. Samuel Lewis rejected those hypotheses with the following views are testing. Number one, the injuries resulting naturally from the process of birth rate much more extensive than those that may be caused by the rough examination. Number two, the midwives in the second division examined their patients in the same manner but without the same illness and effect. Number three, the death rate remained the same even after reducing medical student. Various psychological explanations were attempted. One of them noted that the first division was so arranged that the priest Bearing the last sacrament to die, woman had to pass through the five wards before reaching the sick room beyond. The appearance of priest preceded by an attendant ringing a bell was held to have terrifying and debilitating effect upon the patients in the ward and thus to make the more likely victim of child or fever. In the second division, this adverse factor was absence since the priest had direct access to the sick room. Simul was decided to test the conjecture. He persuaded the priest to come by a roundabout route and without ringing a bell in order to reach the sick chamber silently and unobserved. But the mortality of the first division did not decrease. A new idea was suggested to Samuel Lewis by observation that the first division, the women were delivering lying on their back in the second division on their side. So once again, he introduced the experimenting the lateral position in the first division, but the mortality remains unaffected. At last, early in 1847, an accident gave Samuel Lewis the decisive clue for the solution of the problem. A colleague of his, Polechka, received a puncture wound in finger from the scapel of a student with whom he was performing the autopsy and dead after the agonizing illness during which he displayed the same symptoms that Samuel Wish had observed in the victim of child bed fever. Although the role of the microorganism in such infection had not yet been recognized at the time, Samuel Wish realized that Cadbury matter 
which the student scapel had introduced into the Kolechka's bloodstream had caused the coli fatal illness. And similarities between the course of Kolechka's disease and that of women in the clinic led Samuel Lewis to conclusion that the patient had died of the same kind of blood poisoning his colleague died. Finally, the research of Samuel Lewis reached to the significant conclusion that the woman in the first division died due to the blood poisoning. The doctor and the medical student used to come to the first division from the autopsy room without washing their hand properly and they used to examine the woman who delivered the babies. Therefore, when the doctor trainees washed their hand properly and examined the woman, the mortality rate in the first division got decreased. Similarly, the midwives examining patients in the second division required no autopsy related training. Thus, in second division, there was no any blood poisoning. So, the death rate among the women they examined were low in second division. Similarly, infected mothers transmitted the infection to their babies as well. Dear friend, this was the explanation in English. I'd like to switch to Nepali so that each and every Nepalese student studying in BA first year will understand the text clearly. Scientific inquiry, invention, and test. यस को महिला ले बच्चा जन्माओ दा प्रथम डिविजन मा अत्यादिक बड़ी मात्रा मा महिला आरकु मिर्तु उने कारण संबंधी अनुसंधान गरे को प्रस्तुत गरे का सम। चेवल वाइस बरिष्ठ फिजिशियन तथा वियना जनरल हॉस्पिटल मा 1888 सुत्केरी आमाले बच्चा जन्माए पछि त्यो बच्चा पनि घातक ज्वरोले सताएपछि मृत्यु हुने गर्दथ्यो तर अचम्मको कुरो के थियो भने प्रथम डिभिजनमा रहेका महिलाहरुको मृत्यु अरु भन्दा बढी नै थियो तर मानिसहरुको भीड भने दोस्रो डिभिजनमा बढी थियो किनभने बिमारीहरु प्रथम डिभिजनमा नगई दोस्रो डिभिजनमा रहेर निको पार्नको लागि उनीहरु लागि पर्दथे सेभेलवेजले आफ्नो परिकल्पनाहरुको अर्थहीन तथा दुविधापूर्ण व्याख्यालाई चिर्दै निम्न तर्कहरु अनुमानित बताएका थिए नम्बर 1 उनी महामारीको प्रकोप एउटा कारण हो भन्ने कुरा विश्वस्त भए तापनि यो किन प्रथम डिभिजनमा बढी घातक हुन्छ भन्ने कुरामा अनभिज्ञ थिए नम्बर 2 अर्को कारण अत्यधिक भीड हुनुपर्ने पहिलो डिभिजन भए पनि बढी भीडको संख्या दोस्रो डिभिजनमा देखिन्थ्यो नम्बर 3 त्यसैले अर्को कारण शिकारु स्टाफहरुको कारण पनि हुन सक्दथ्यो तर बावजुद उनीहरुको संख्या घटाए तापनि प्रथम डिभिजनमा भएको मृत्यु दरमा कुनै पनि परिवर्तन आएन उनले धेरै जुक्ति लगाए उनले यो पनि थाहा पाए कि प्रथम डिभिजनमा भएका महिलाहरुले प्राय उत्तानो परेर बच्चा पाउने गर्थे तर दोस्रो डिभिजनका महिलाहरुले कोल्टे परेर पाउने गर्थे त्यसैले इनले प्रथम डिभिजनका महिलाहरुलाई पनि कोल्टे परेरै पाउन लगाए तर पनि मृत्यु दरमा कुनै पनि असर परेन एक दिनको कुरो उनको साथी कोलेजका जुन त्यही हस्पिटलमा डाक्टर थिए उनको औंलामा घाउ हुन्छ उनको औंलामा घाउ भइसकेपछि उनी त्यही घाउले मर्छन् सेमल विजले अनुसन्धान गर्दै जाँदा के पाउँछन् भन्दा उनको साथी कोलेजकाको हात सर्जिकल ब्लेडले काटेको हुँदैछ र उनको त्यो ब्लेडले कतिखेर काट्यो भन्दा जब उनी अटोप्सी गर्दै थिए पोस्टमार्टम गर्दै थिए त्यो बेलामा त्यो मृत शरीरको कीटाणुहरु साथीको हातबाट उनको रगतमा छिर्यो त्यसैले यही पोस्टमार्टम गर्दा गर्दैको लासको कीटाणुहरु हातमा सरेर यिनलाई चाहिँ यो बिमारी भएको भन्ने सेमल विजले पुष्टि गरे अन्तिम सेवलुज आफ्नो अनुसन्धानको महत्त्वपूर्ण निष्कर्षमा पुग्दछन् प्रथम डिभिजनमा रहेका महिलाहरुको बढी मात्रामा पोइजनिङ हुने गर्दथ्यो डाक्टर तथा मेडिकलका तालिमे विद्यार्थीहरु उपचारका क्रममा जथाभावी रूपमा हात सफा नगरी बिरामीको परीक्षण गरेको पाइयो तर जब डाक्टर तथा विद्यार्थीहरुले हेरविचार साथ आफ्ना हात सफा सुग्घर राख्न थालेपछि मृत्यु दरमा कमी आएको कुरा थाहा पाइयो त्यसैगरी दोस्रो डिभिजनमा रहेका बिरामीहरुमा कुनै पनि तालिम नचाहिने स्वयंसेविकाहरुले उपचार गरिरहेका थिए उनीहरु चिर फार्मा संलग्न हुन्थेन त्यसैले दोस्रो डिभिजनमा मृत्यु दर कम पाइएको पनि पुष्टि भयो र त्यो रोग संक्रमित आमाबाट बच्चामा पनि सर्दो रहेछ भन्ने कुरा पनि पत्ता लाग्यो साथीहरु यो थियो साइन्टिफिक इन्क्वायरीज इन्भेन्सन एन्ड टेस्टको नेपाली एक्सप्लेनेसन 
Here, these are the questions I have collected from this text that has been frequently asked in the examination of first year compulsory English. So practice it for the examination. Dear viewers, thanks for watching. I hope I have made you crystal clear about the HA. We'll definitely be connected in upcoming videos regarding BA first year compulsory English syllabus. Till then, I'll sign up. Stay safe, stay happy, and don't forget to subscribe my channel, Thorai Discussion. Thank you.